What is up, my great warriors, and welcome back to another video, another follow along. Today, uh, I've got probably the most requested follow along on this channel, and that is to cover a football specific or a soccer, if you're in the US, specific follow along flexibility routine. As always, the uh, the offline version will be available in the description down below if you want a PDF. So if you get through this routine and you do enjoy it and you do think it's useful, make sure you hit a thumbs up button and also you can hit that subscribe button, which is right next to it as well. To start off with, you may need some equipment during this routine. We're going to get into it as we go along, but I would recommend having like either a couple of yoga blocks and some bands or like a strap will do be fine or some pillows i've just got a bolster here so having some form of that will be useful and uh, apart from that let's jump into the routine so we're going to start with some hip swivels we're going to start with in the seated position feet outside shoulder width we're just going to drop both to the left hand side so we're going to move one leg into external rotation one into internal make sure we keep the chest facing forward supported by the hands chest nice and upright and then swap to the other side so that's one rep per side we're going to do 10 of these in total not particularly quickly i'm going to pause for a few seconds on each side this is really just to get things moving get the hips shifting i'm gonna let you do these at your own pace and whilst you're doing them i'm just going to mention that with this routine because football is such a dynamic sport it's important as well to consider that static stretching isn't just the only thing you need to be doing it's just one component of it i would definitely be doing some strength training as a form of flexibility work covered this on many videos on this channel i'll probably link some in the description but doing something like romanian deadlifts or split squats and hamstring cuts and these sort of things that's going to be massively bang for your buck when it comes to injury re, uh, reduction so we're going to do one more per side and then we're going to finish on our right hand side and we're going to move into what would be a 90-90 position. So we want our front leg going directly out in front of us, chest going over the front knee, knee bent to 90, leg going out sideways, knee bent to 90, and then sit. So if you can't sit, if you're leaning over to one side, make sure you place something underneath your hips here, like for example, this yoga block. So elevate yourself until you're comfortable. And then from here, we're just gonna lean forward to a point of stretch on this front leg glute. We're gonna do three reps of PNF. So we're gonna press our knee, or this knee down into the ground for five seconds. You're gonna contract your glute, try to press the knee into the ground. Hold for five seconds. You're then gonna breathe out, try to go deeper into the stretch. And when I say deeper, I don't mean just rounding. Try to keep the chest upright, try to roll the hip into it. So it's two more of those. So press the knee down. One, two, three, four, five, Try to get a little bit deeper. We're going to do one more here. One, two, three, four, five, and shift a bit deeper. You're going to hold this last position just for 10 seconds. Again, you can try and get that twist going, try to make sure you're keeping that sternum over that front knee. And done. So we're going to come back, we're going to hip swivel our way over to the other side. And we do the exact same thing. So lean forward until you feel a point of stretch. Then we're gonna do those three PNF reps. So press that knee down into the ground. Five, four, three, two, one. Breathe out, shift deeper. And again, five, four, three, two, one. Breathe out, shift. Last one here. Remember you're rotating the hips, not arching, not rounding the back. Press down, five, four, three, two, one. Just gonna hold this last position for 10 seconds or so. Right, so this is again, just a little bit of a warm up of the hips. We're now gonna move into just a little bit of spinal rotation. So I want you to get into a quadruped position. So you have the arms basically on all fours. We're just gonna walk both hands forward slightly. And we're gonna start with the right hand side. So we're gonna take our right arm and we're gonna thread it through underneath, get that shoulder down towards the ground. And then we're gonna try and rotate slightly away. So we're just gonna hold this position for about 30 seconds. You're gonna be feeling 
a stretch over probably the back of the shoulder and then going down into the lower back, possibly into the glutes as well. Um, we're just trying to get some rotation going. So one important element of kicking and also turning and moving direction is spinal rotation. And then this can get quite locked up if we don't use it. And as for flexibility, you use or lose it. So we're gonna hold for another 10 seconds or so. Keep trying to reach that hand deeper into the stretch. So keep trying to get that hand as far away from you as possible. Get more rotation going. All right, we're gonna come up so you can stay where you are. We're just gonna switch sides. I'm gonna face forward so you can see from a slightly different angle. So this time we're gonna thread that left hand through, reach the hand as far as we can. And we're just gonna sit back in this position again, just chill out. Nothing too intense to start with. During all these stretches, just try to be a little bit conscious of your breathing. If you notice that you're not breathing, you're like holding your breath, you're probably pushing stretches a little bit too hard. You're not gonna, you're not gonna have this initially in these sort of stretches. As we get further on, you might find yourself or catch yourself doing that. So just try to keep the breathing deep, slow, consistent. Okay few seconds and then I'm gonna come back so we're in that quadruped position now and then I just want you to lie forward onto your front and we're gonna do probably a drill that you have done before and that is a scorpion kick so we're gonna have our hands out in 90 degrees bent to 90 degrees we're gonna start with the left hand side I'm just gonna lift the leg up bent I'm gonna drop it over all the way around we're gonna press that shoulder into the ground and then bring it back to the center so when we do this, we're gonna feel a bit of a spinal rotation, but it's also gonna be a bit of stretch in the chest as well. So we're gonna do five of these in total, pausing for a few seconds on each rep. So that would be three. We're just going to stay in the same position. We're just going to do the other side. So bend the leg, bring it round. Make sure you're keeping strong with the shoulder. So you're going to press the arms slightly into the ground as you rotate. So we'll stabilize the shoulder. Two. So from here, this is where you're gonna need your strap. Um, you're actually just gonna roll over. We're gonna start in a lying position on this one. And you're gonna have, to, you're gonna want some form of strap. If you don't have a strap, it's not a problem. You can do this with your hand, but it just works better with a strap. So I'm gonna lie down. We're gonna start on the right hand side. Now this is probably one of the worst stretches of this routine. So full warning. It's not particularly fun or pleasant, but you can adjust the intensity by how deep you pull yourself. We're gonna loop that band around our right legs. We're gonna pull ourselves into a little bit of a hamstring stretch, not too much. From here, we're gonna drop the leg across the body. Now this is instantly gonna make it less fun. It's gonna change the stretch to be going on the outside of the leg, almost into what feels like the IT band. Here, we're just gonna do 12 reps and we bend the leg and straighten that, like maintaining that position where we're bringing it across the body. So do this with your own time. Keep it pulling across the body. 12 repetitions, sort of nice, quick, little bit of a pause with a straight leg position. And embrace the sucks. This is not a fun one. It's a bit of a grisly one and it, to be honest with you, even if you get flexible, this one doesn't get any better. 12 in total. And after we've done that 12, we're just gonna let the leg drop round to the side. Drop round to the side. 
we're gonna use our hand to assist us, we're gonna pull that knee down towards the ground, and then we're gonna try and pull our shoulder, our right shoulder, down towards the ground as well. So we've got this opposing forces. If you're finding this leg just wants to hover, you can place your hand underneath and support it, and the main focus should be about trying to pull that shoulder, that right shoulder, down towards the ground. We're just gonna hold this one for about 20 seconds. Again, just keeping the breathing pretty consistent. You can notice with this one, actually, if you try to take deep breaths and really expand the rib cage, that you're gonna be able to rotate a little bit better. Right, we're gonna come back to center. We're gonna swap sides. So we're gonna do the left leg now. Get that band, loop it around the foot. Drop the leg to the side. And then we're gonna do 12 of those reps where we bend the leg and try to straighten it into a deeper stretch. So each time we're doing a rep, we're gonna try and pull ourselves a bit deeper. And with 12 reps, somewhat consistent tempo. me down for 12 and then same thing just gonna let go of the band we're gonna drop that knee that knee to the right hand side now remember support the knee if you have to think about getting that left shoulder down onto the ground We can come back to center now. We're actually going to come into a support position. And we're going to press up into what would be a downward dog, or your best interpretation of a downward dog. Obviously, a downward dog is straight legs, straight arms overhead, but we're focusing on the lower body here. So your shoulders can come forward a bit. You can come up as you feel the stretch is enough over your hamstrings with the feet flat. We're then going to walk back and forth, just on the feet. It's about 20 of these. The number isn't so specific, we're just going to try and feel out a little bit of a calf stretch into our hamstrings. So shift back and forth, pause for a second in each stretch. Keep trying to arch that back a bit more and go a little bit deeper as you do these little walking motions. Probably a few more on each side. So you're gonna come now onto your knees. Hopefully you're in a position, lean back, place the hands behind you. So use your hands behind you to kind of take a little bit of support here. If this is really tight, then we know we need to work on some quad flexibility, which is what we're gonna be doing. So now in this position, pin the shoulder blades back, lift the chest nice and high, you're gonna squeeze the glutes and push the hips up. So you should feel a stretch over the hips. I'm gonna hold this for 10 seconds. So really, really squeeze the glutes, try to push the hips up as high as you can, arching through the back. Three, two, one. Come down to that relaxed position, reset. I'm gonna do two more of those 10 seconds actively contract. So lift up. Keep lifting, squeezing those glutes hard. You can even think about pressing those feet into the ground slightly as well. So we're gonna try and contract the quads. Two, one, come back down. So we're gonna do one last one here. So press those knees down, press the feet down, lift the hips up, squeeze the glutes. Keep 
hold in. Keep going. Three, two, one. Right, so this is where we come to the, uh, the second lot of unpleasantness. So we're gonna do some hamstring stretching um, and this is where you might want your yoga blocks. So we're gonna start in a standing pike position. Now, we're not gonna want to go to our max pike. So, you know, okay, this is like a comfortable level of pike. We don't wanna go max. We wanna go a little bit outside of our comfort level. So you may need some yoga blocks to elevate you. You're gonna need some solid positioning with the hands either way. So find a height that you can do. And then from here, the goal is to be able to lift the feet up towards, so we're gonna try and lift our toes up as high as we can, pull the feet towards our shins. So we're gonna be trying contracting the anterior tibialis here. Also you're gonna be trying to squeeze the quads as well. So both at the same time as hard as you can. That is gonna change the stretch and bring it right over the calf through the back of the knee. It's not gonna be super fun. We're gonna again do three 10 seconds of those. So find the setup that you need and then we're gonna do that rep. So, first one, lift the toes up as high as you can, contract the quads, contract the anterior tibialis, keep the hands pushing down into the ground, keep holding, keep going. Four, three, two, one. And relax, you can shake it off, bend the knees a bit. We try to stay roughly in a pike position. So again, we're gonna do another one. If you can get deeper with how far the ground your hands are, then go a little bit further down. So lift again. And the quads contracting hard. The anterior tibialis contracting hard. Try to lift those toes as high as you can. Three, two, one. And again, shake it off if you need to. I'm just gonna do one last one here. So, last one. Set yourself. Lift the feet as hard as you can. High as you can with the toes. Four, three, two, and one. Shake that off however you want to. We're gonna finish up now with just one sort of final set of hamstring stretches and then we're moving on to some other stuff, so don't stress. We're gonna come forward into a lunge with our right leg going forward. So, moderate amount of lunge. And we have our hands either side of our foot. We're gonna do some hamstring rocks where we push the hips back straighten the leg and then pull the toes towards us. Now, depending on how hard this is, again, you might need your yoga blocks or you might need the elevation that you're gonna need to keep the chest a bit higher. The lower you go with your chest, obviously the more intense the stretch becomes. So again, make sure you got your setup. We do five of these and then a 10 second pause in the last rep. So you're gonna push the hips backwards, try to keep the stomach tight with the quads, pull the toes back, hold for a few seconds and then go back to that lunge. Five of these, remember, first side. We're focusing on every single rep that we're trying to not lose any contraction or any space between the stomach and our thigh, okay? Four. So fifth one, we're gonna pause for 10 seconds. When you're in this pause, you can try and now walk your hands a little bit further forward if you can. Obviously, if the stretch is intense by itself, just hold it. Three, two, one. So shift that into that lunge. Bring our right leg back, left leg forward. Exactly the same thing again this time. So push the hips back. Try to keep that stomach contact. Pull the toes back towards you. Remember five per side, a little pause at the end. Make sure you're remembering to bring those toes back as well. So getting into the fifth one now for myself. I'm gonna hold for 10 seconds. Right, so shake it off. We can come now forward just a bit of the opposite stretch. We're gonna do just a quick tap, upward dog position, move from side to side, just shake it off a little bit. We're now gonna pay a little bit of attention to the quads. 
So we're going to come forward into a seated position. So we're going to sit, legs in front of us. We're going to lean back, we're going to take a right leg, and we're just going to bring it into what would be like a quad stretch. So we're going to have it coming around our body. Actually, I'll show you facing the other way so you can see. So bring the leg around into a stretch of the quad. If this is a little bit uncomfortable on the front of the top of the foot, you can place your hand underneath to support you. And I'm going to try and start leaning backwards. So using the elbow to support you. And we're going to twist slightly to our left hand side. So we're basically doing a standing up quad stretch, but we're just making it a little bit more comfortable and letting gravity do its work. I want to make sure we're thinking about squeezing this glute on the right hand side. So we're trying to push that hip through. I'm just going to hold this position. Nice simple stretch. Should be feeling a good stretch over the quad probably into the hip flexor as well. Just gonna spend 30 seconds here. Right, so we're gonna come back up. I'm gonna swap sides so you can stay where you are. I'm gonna flip myself around so you guys can see. So again, grab that foot, bring it behind you. Hands to support if you need to. Lean back. Squeeze that left glute, make sure you're pushing the hip through to feel a bit more of a stretch. And then I'm just gonna hold. Just keep that, maintain that engagement of the glute all the way through this one. So a few more seconds and that is basically Quads done, we're gonna move now to the final two stretches. So staying in the seated position, we're gonna bring the feet towards us and open our legs into what would be a tailored position. So the legs go nice and wide, or butterfly if you prefer. We're gonna think about using our glutes to try and pull our knees down towards the ground. And then from here, we're gonna lift up with our hands behind us. So lift ourselves back to the position, our hips now hovering. We're just gonna keep that glute engagement so we're going to keep trying to pull the knees down towards the ground and we're shift forward moving the hips towards the feet keep that pull down and shift back we're just going to do five of these pausing at each end for a couple of seconds and all the time using the glutes to pull the knees down So last one, keep using those glutes to pull the knees down. And come back into a seated position. We can then grab our feet with our hands, use the elbows to push down on the feet and then pull yourself forward. Doesn't matter if you have a rounded back here, doesn't matter if your knees are up here, as long as you feel a reasonable stretch, we're just gonna come down forward. And then what we're gonna do, using our hands to lock ourselves into this position, and our elbows sort of into our shins, into our calves. You're gonna try and lift your thighs up, but we're gonna press ourselves into our elbows. So you're gonna lift for five seconds. It's actively contracting that groin. Five, four, three, two, one. And you're gonna just let it relax a little bit. Try to push a little bit deeper with those hands. I'm gonna do two more of those. So lift into your elbows as hard as you can. They're not gonna go anywhere because your arms are in the way. Just try and contract that groin. Two, three, four, five. Breathe out. Try to push it down a little bit deeper. So we do one last long one here. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold this one for another five seconds. Right, so you can shake that off. And then come into a standing position. I'm just gonna walk the feet out till 
moderate sort of pancake level. All we're going to do now is we're going to do a Cossack squat. So we're going to shift our weight down to the side. We can use our hands to assist us here, keeping one leg straight now. Probably a lot of you are going to come forward because you haven't got the ankle flexibility onto the toes. It's actually also fine. We're just focusing on a stretch in the thigh at the moment. So we're going to do some transitions here. We're going to do five per side. So we're going to shift, trying to keep the feet as low as possible onto the other side. Again, using the hands to assist. So if you have to come forward a bit like this, honestly, absolutely fine. So shift back, so it's one per side. We're gonna do four more. So pause for a few seconds on each side. Should feel a stretch nicely over the hamstring, probably the medial side. It's been quite a deep stretch as well on this bending leg. Third one. After we've done that five per side, we're just gonna stand up straight legs on both of our hands in front. So into a little bit of a pancake stretch. And then from here, you're just gonna let gravity do its work and you're gonna try and get as low down as you can. If you can get Elbow, if you can get hands full, great. If you can get elbows, great. If you can get head, even better. But it's whatever feels like a good stretch for you. We're just gonna hold this for 20 seconds. Come up now, you can walk those feet in, and then that is basically the routine. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is a nice, simple, little bit more relaxed stretching routine to develop just some of the core things you're going to need for football. But obviously, you know, doing your sport, playing football is the most important thing, and then also we want to be doing some form of strength training as well to help with that injury mitigation. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you enjoyed the routine, please hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. Right next to it is that subscribe button as well if you don't want to miss out on any more future videos and join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. But that has basically been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.